I think the difficulty for people of Surrey is trying to decide who's going to tackle the problem. Because we have a track record. <coughs> because we've already done it. Because if you look at where we came from, uh, when we inherited what we inherited from one of our other, uh, one of the other candidates, we were the worst in the English-speaking language world for um, uh, car theft, and we were the worst for violent crimes within f Canada's 15 largest cities, and we had the lowest per capita cost of policing in the country. So we had. No police, or very few. Uh, we had gone through four officers in command, uh, so the relationship was not good. We had the um, we were spending sixty nine million dollars on policing a year, and we're we moved that needle to one hundred and twenty three million dollars a year. Uh, and now, of course, we're, we'll move it even further because we've had a, n a number of officers that will, will cost us $21 million when they're fully on the ground. So did we, is there more to do? Yes, there is. Of course, there always is. And frankly, in a growing city, that will always happen in any city. So, but have we moved that needle considerably and have we, have we done a lot? Yes. We've got about 300 more officers than when we started. And... Um, change that reputation so I believe yes I can do it because I've been on the ground actually doing that work for almost a decade now so I, I think the experience uh, and the fact that we have shifted the we have transformed the image of Surrey this is of course an issue that needs to be addressed but it isn't the only issue you can't be a mayor and have this as your single issue. You have got to have the ability to juggle all these priorities and there better be, and there's a lot more than one. I think that's um, I think that that's the message that I've I've been struggling to convey is where we started and where we are and that if, that we have laid a really good foundation, but there's more work to be done, and that's the piece that uh, uh, I think that's the, that, that's the dif more difficult message to deliver, is that everybody's got a platform, and they're not particularly too different other than uh, uh, the plastic police or whatever the, 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 the yeah, <laughs> other, the, other than that, other than that piece, but um, the the rest of it is pretty much the same. Everyone knows the issues. So my struggle is that people clearly understand this has not been something that we haven't looked at and been dealing with and trying to, to play the catch-up game, much the same as the, the facility game of the 800 uh, million that we had to invest in facilities. That was because for a decade we had zero tax. So all of that was a, ca was, was a, a catch up model as well. So now you're doing catch up with public safety, which I think we've been uh, um, uh, done a good job in terms of, of the monies that we've spent and been able to maintain the lowest tax rate in the region while playing that catch up game and then having a solid platform for where we're going uh, and, and still maintaining a reasonable tax rate of only the cost of living. All of those things I'm hoping the public puts together uh, and puts together quickly because it's Saturday. <laughs> What's your explanation for why it's suddenly such an issue? Because I think probably you're I right think that crime is down. The, the perception in politics is what's critical here. I think you know. three things, or three incidents. Uh, Often wrong. Of course, Not yes. I think Surrey 6. Mm -hmm. I mean, why that escalates. I think hockey mom, uh, Julie, and the, uh, the emotional uh, um, 
tragedy that was and, and, and that that resonates right across the country. I think mo the most recent incident with Serena. Um, so some pretty bad examples of people who came into our city, frankly, um, and who likely should never have been on the streets at all. One came from, well, I think it was Brandon or well, came from somewhere outside the city about eight weeks before it happened. And the second one also released. So uh, part of anyone's platform has got to be how do you deal with high risk offenders or how do you deal with uh, um, uh, prolific offenders. But the high risk ones we've got to be able to, at the federal level, identify where they're going to be. Uh, and you know that uh, uh, Mayor Watts screamed to the rooftops when we had, uh, when that incident, prior to that, about a year ago, prior to the incident. Um, but I think there's a model in the states whereby you actually can identify and do some mapping of where they are without being a vigilante and saying this is the exact address, but at least you can have the consciousness to know you're in sort of a vulnerable neighborhood. I think that's, that's probably something that, ap that must happen. Uh, but that's where I would say the, the emotional angst has come from. And so I also believe that without the, the preventative time our current officers have, that some of the other incidents around just what's going on in your neighborhood, somebody took my golf clubs, um, those create that sense of, of what's going on as well. But the reality is you're right, it's going down, but that doesn't matter if, if the perception is there we need to fix it, and we are short officers, we know that. A couple of things on that. Uh, first of all, the Surrey Development Corporation belongs to the people of Surrey. So it has made, it, it, is, making pro, it is making money, it is a profitable venture, and its books are all audited through the city books, so it's, they're one and the same. The transfer of land, which shows as a, as a debit on the books, is actually our land. So it's really just a, a, paper, a, a paper look. Um, well, you're giving up an asset, though. We're giving up an asset and moving it over here to a shareholder asset, and the shareholder is the people of Surrey. So we could, it advantages the people of Surrey because the higher and better use of, of the asset belongs to them. And so that allows us to pay for more police. That allows us to pay for more parks, more sports fields, more. We got a dividend in the last two years of four and a half million. Now that dividend will increase because the profit was more than that, but in uh, uh, turning that into uh, other elements of the, of the uh, business model itself, but that dividend can increase as we need it to increase. Right now, that's what we've got. Um, do I think it's the right model? I think that most major cities, if you look at Calgary, look at Edmonton, look at Winnipeg, this is not a new model. This is something that cities have done in order to make sure that the advantage is theirs. So if it, and, and I want to talk a little bit about why this model works for us a little differently. Surrey, if we were going to sell the piece of land, and certainly a former uh, uh, mayoral candidate did with respect to Campbell Heights, and I could go back to that if you wanted to talk about it, but if, if we turn that land over to a developer, they could hold it get the escalated value in whatever and nothing happens for us for a long time. What we've done is we've taken the private sector, the developers, and the Surrey Development Corporation. We haven't done anything without a, pro without a public partner. Uh, and we've said, look, we want an end client. So if we're doing a deal that's a business deal, we want the end client and the jobs 
to be right there. So I'll use the most recent one with uh, Beatty and Weir. Beatty's going to do that building. That's our land. Beatty's going to do the building, and we have an end client with jobs. That's what we want, rather than to sell it and have them sit on that for a while. Let me tell you that I never served under uh, a, um, a government with Mr. McCallum. You were you were part of Surrey. I ran as a then. yeah, uh, and and he wasn't elected okay. when I ran um, nine years ago. And so after the election, I sat down with Diane Watts and a couple of our other councillors, Barbara Steele and Mary Martin, and said, look, this is not going to be, how are we going to make this work? And we had a long discussion, lots of coffee, conversations around what a governance model could look like and what we wanted to see out of our terms in office and the kind of government, governance that we wanted to have. And that's where that kind of collaborative spirit that I have as a middle child, sort of lots of conversations around that. And then we, we formed Surrey first. And we decided that it didn't matter if you were left, right, or center, that what we really wanted to do was put Surrey first and do the governing for what was in the best interests of, uh, of our citizens. And I think we've been really successful at doing that. And I think any time you can have a table where you have a Judy Villeneuve, generally on the, and then a Marvin Hunt over here, and you can still come to consensus around what's a direction that uh, you've got a model that works. So the fact that it didn't work for one person is uh, is unfortunate, but I don't think it has anything to do with the model. I think it has more to do with so now we have, ambition. So we have three slates. So Doug McCallum used to work with Diane Watts. Perinda Rosotti used to work with Diane Watts. So now you have Diane Watts' party, and the two of them are running against you. Is that is that uncomfortable, that dynamic? No. Because? Because I like what we've created. I like the direction we're going. And I like the positive energy of the Surrey First model and the team that's... I think I, I like the momentum. I like... Uh, no, I am, I'm very comfortable with where I am.